Hey guys, it's AV. Welcome back to another exciting edition of Behind the Blessing as we share with you on Praise 92.1. Make sure you have our Praise Houston Instagram. Make sure you're following us right now. Make sure you're following us on YouTube. Make sure you're following us on Facebook as well. Praise 92.1 is back in the city and we're excited to bring you these awesome guests who join us Behind the Blessing. He's no stranger to us. He's uh, one third of the Williams Brothers sweeping around everybody's front door. And of course, he's got a brand new single, just celebrated a, a, an awesome, an awesome moment in his life that we're going to get into today. But we welcome to Behind the Blessing, the one and only Drake Tate. What's up, bro? My man, A.V., what's happening, man? It's all good here. All yes, sir. Good. It's a blessing, man. It's, I, so many congratulations to you. But before we get into all what has transpired in your life, I want you to take us back to the beginning stages for you, especially with the world-renowned Williams Brothers, we know that you started out actually as a musician with the group and then became a, a member of the group. But take us into that whole transaction uh, that happened in your life. Started back in 1998. Uh, uh, I was hired as the lead guitar player for the Williams Brothers in 98 uh, after traveling with other R&B artists and gospel artists, actually. It was <laughs> always my dream to be a part of the Williams Brothers uh, ministry, but you know, not as a musician. And right. as a, when I was a little, when I was a little boy, I, I dreamed of after seeing them in the Sam Houston Coliseum downtown Houston. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I dreamed of. I I told my little brother, I said, I'm gonna see them one day, and uh, and never thought that they would call me to play guitar for them in '98. Mm -hmm. And uh, a little after that, I did with that with them for about a year, and then I left the group and came back as a background singer. In 2000, in uh, 2010, they set me down with uh, with our management and lawyers and said, uh, "What do you? How do you feel about becoming an actual William brother?" Yeah, I was like, "What? <laughs> <laughs> of course, <laughs> this is a dream come true." I said it was gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, isn't that? But isn't that amazing, bro? You think about it. I mean, we hear it all the time, especially being in the inspiration in the church world and the gospel. You hear about the power of your words. Right. And sometimes, right. even though we might not have full understanding or the magnitude of just how powerful that our words are in creating stuff for us, it's just something that's always amazing to me between desire and confession that right. we see it as a reality, even though we've been saying it for years, it's still amazing. Right, right. And you, the crazy thing is, everything that you're saying, it's like even when I was a kid, I didn't know the power of my voice. I didn't know the power yeah. of my confession i didn't know none about all that stuff i just yeah. said i gonna be a william brother one day right. now if it was going to happen in my mind or whatever but <laughs> never thought that um yeah. that i would get that opportunity and and it was like man you spoke it when you yeah. were 10 years old so i thank god for it man i'm i'm very honored to be with such legends i've learned a mm -hmm. lot they have uh really nurtured me in the business and uh and and the great thing about it is they they let me spread my wings to do other things outside of the brothers camp. I know? love so, it. Yeah, that's yeah, good. I love that. And just talk about it, just some of the, the valuable principles that you learn. Because I love the Williams brothers because, you know, they, they're skilled in their craft, they're mm -hmm. anointed at what they do, but they also like to have fun. Them brothers right. know how to have a good time. But yeah, just talk the about most, what you glean from that. The most country is funniest guys you probably ever want to meet in your whole life. Like for real. I'm from the city. I'm from Houston, Texas. And a lot yeah. of people say, You country, Dre. Well, it's because I've been around Melvin and Doug and Mr. Green for over 20 years now. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. but man, they they have taught me so much uh when it comes down to just being a true professional on stage and off stage. Mm -hmm. Uh try to handle yourself as a professional, even when you walk through the store, you know, because you yeah. never know who you might come across, who you might meet. And uh, they, they just taught me about timeliness, uh, you know, looking your best at all yeah. times, you know, all that kind yeah. of stuff like that, that, that uh, mom and daddy taught me when I was little, but yeah. uh, the brothers just like, they just taught me how to do it on a more in a professional level, professional mm -hmm. level. Uh, so I'm, I'm grateful for that. And here's what I love is the fact that you don't go into it thinking that you've reached the pinnacle or that you know it all. Because, you know, we live in a society now, it's hard to teach a lot of people stuff today. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody comes in with, it's almost like they come in at a supervisor level. You already know what it right. takes. 
right. and hear these guys right. decades of music not not last right. year but decades right. of, of hits <clears throat> Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And the great thing about that AV is, uh, uh, I've, I've been under them. And even when they gave me the platform to have a say on, uh, a lot of business ventures and, uh, Melvin gives me, uh, having a say on yeah. uh, what we're going to sing tonight, you know, yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> now they're at that point to where they look to me, mm -hmm. you know, and that's just like amazing in itself, you know, yeah. what I'm and, and, and y'all gotta understand, I didn't, I didn't, I had to come up in the ranks. <laughs> right, right, definitely. <laughs> you yeah. Know, you know, yeah. I had to come up in the ranks for a long time. You know, I, I've done, I had to do stuff that uh, Andre Tate before <laughs> the brothers wasn't used to doing. It's kind of like, I feel like I was de escalating my gift or something, you know, but uh, it taught me humility, man. And, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, look, it's it's just been a blessing, AB, like yeah. real man. I've always been an humble guy, and I will always be an humble guy. Uh, but they they just they bless me with a lot of knowledge about how to sustain and be kept in this industry, which can yeah. be really really crazy sometimes. Yeah. And uh, because of their toolish, they they just uh, able me to be able to do more even now. Yeah, man. What's probably something crazy that may have happened on tour with you guys at the Williams brothers that people would probably be surprised at, especially with them. Um, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb on this one. <laughs> and, uh, uh, a lot of times y'all don't know, y'all know Melvin and Doug are brothers, you know, but one of the funniest things to, to witness is Melvin and Doug arguing on stage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, with smiles on their faces. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, it may be like, Chef, you're singing too long. Yeah. You're singing long. Oh, no. <laughs> it's like you eating up too much time, man. Yeah. Right yeah. Come on, Chef. It ain't preaching time. It's time to sing. You keep coming here to sing. And they be doing it back and forth. And you will never, never know. know. <laughs> you hey, you going to have people looking for that now. We looking at oh, Yeah, they, they yeah. <laughs> But hey, that's part of that professionalism to be able to say right, it like, hey, right. just move on, brother. Right. We, they didn't come here that's to hear a sermon. They want, and I want right. to get my, my part in too. I want to say exactly, so I, exactly. I, I get it. I get it, man. Who who was the first person to put the guitar in your hand? Um, actually, my dad. My dad okay. uh put guitar in my hand. I never forget it. Back in uh like eighty one, eighty two. Uh, I know I don't look that old, everybody, but no. I'm, I'm yeah. getting up. <laughs> no, but they don't look it. <laughs> in 82, he put the guitar in my hand, and uh, I've always liked the guitar. Uh, okay. But uh, I, like other musicians, I started on other instruments. I started playing drums at my grandfather's church in Sunnyside. Yeah. Um, and went from drums and started playing guitar. And then because I played guitar, I knew how to play, I learned to play bass. But uh, my daddy started me out in MTV. That's how I learned. <laughs> yeah, he say MTV. Yeah, we were all we were all MTV watching back right, in the day. Right. Your, your, your grandfather's church in Sunnyside. Which what what church was it? You know that's you know that's where my, I'm from. My late grandfather, uh, Pastor Leroy Houston and Gideon Missionary Baptist Church yeah. on Galesburg, fifty six oh three Galesburg. I never. Yes, and, I didn't know that was your grandfather, man. Uh, yes, that's my that's my mom's dad, man. That's that's my hero, man. That's my grandfather. That's where we, wow. we were raised, grew up in that church. I believe uh, I can't know. I don't remember the name of the pastor now. I forgot his name, but uh, I think he's been there since my grandfather retired from there. But grandfather's been gone now since 2010. But yes, mm -hmm. he's the father of that church. Wow, I didn't know you just gave me some history, man. I didn't know that. I knew I knew it was the reason I liked you, but I see even more. You got this kind of side blood in you, baby. I like that, man. Take us, take us back, Dre. You got to take us back, man. You wrote have this brand new single that I love called "My Angel," but this song is definitely birthed after you spent three years as a single person, who's pretty much like a lot of us who you've been through relationships, right. some hard shifts that you kind of almost give up on love. But something mm -hmm. happened one day to you while you were listening to the radio. Right, something happened, man. I, but but what happened was I heard this sweet, majestic, melodic, m m angelic. I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This sweet angelic voice. 
like around six o'clock in the morning, like around six o'clock in the morning on the Yolanda Adams Morning Show. And it was Bishop Becker talking to my guy, Marcus Wiley, and she yeah. was going in the end, man. I don't know, Marcus just felt like be quiet that morning and she was going in. I was on my way to the airport actually. And, okay. And I was at a I was at a low place, man, uh, just for the single life. You know, I'm like, yeah. man, come on, I look all right. You know, I'm fine, you know what I'm saying? I'm doing all right. Why well, I can't find nobody? Yeah. And she was just going in, man. And uh, she encouraged me before I got on that plane. And I said, I'm going to look her up. Yeah. Find her. She's and it was, it was months before I yeah. did it, but I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, best of, uh, Bishop Beck, I've been knowing her. Uh, for years now, and of course, it's amazing how you you guys were almost really like on a similar path. And mm -hmm. it's amazing how when people are looking for something, how God kind of connects the two together. And like you said, especially but here you are, an artist, you're rolling with the legendary Williams brothers, you would think mm -hmm. finding a relationship would be no problem for you. But you said you're sitting in a in a in a place of almost like depression, wondering what right, is going on. Right, 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 and it, that's exactly what it was. And uh, really, it was it was uh, right after I had to pray, man, and I had to. It's some things that I had to take off personally as a man, you okay. know, to uh, get me prepared for what God was about to able me to be involved in when it come down to Bishop Becker. But that was a lot of testosterone that had to be come that had to come down. <laughs> And some, and I had to pick up some trust in God, some real trust, you know. Yeah. And yeah. I'm great, but I can't do nothing without God. And you know, sometimes you get to that point to where you're the man, and I'm the man, yeah. and and, yeah. and and this is where it's gonna go down. This is what I want. But it wasn't until I learned how to trust yeah. God totally that He gave me the tools that I needed to even attract her. Yeah, yeah. And as you said, man, you know, God was able to open the door for you. And a lot of times God opened the door for you, but you still got to do the work. So you got to you got to go out and pursue her because it's one thing to say, "Hey, I like I like her voice. I looked her up. I like how she looks. You right. know, she's nice. Right. She's fine. She's all this." But at the right. same time, God ain't coming out of heaven to drag <laughs> you over there to see her. You got to put uh -huh. some work in. Talk about that, man. The first time. Look, you AB, guys met. look man. <laughs> look, uh, Rebecca made me go back and pray more times than I thought I would ever have to as a brother because. Uh, she she thought I was nice looking, and she she was impressed by who I was and what I was a part of and what I did. But she gave me a hard time because <laughs> it's like uh, she, she knew I was authentic, but she kept saying, yeah. "Who sent you? Like who? Right. Where you come yeah. from? Like I, she never heard of me, and I've never heard of hers yeah. until I heard on the radio. But she kept coming. She kept basically saying, like, uh. I know what I prayed for, but geez, yeah. I didn't think it was gonna come in this fashion or whatever. But now we, I didn't have to work hard, Av, but yeah. because she, I think in the back of her mind, in the at the in the in her heart, she knew mm -hmm. that it was something different. Yeah, and I'm congr congratulations to you guys too, because you you recently got married, you tied yeah. the knot, you know, go yeah. it goes from just hearing that voice on the radio to now husband and wife. Yeah. You know, all the time now. <laughs> now I'm gonna turn the radio off sometime. <laughs> Watch out, Dre. Watch out, bro. Oh. Listen, Becca, I ain't got nothing to do with what Dre is saying. That's all Dre right now. That's I'm sure she'll say but, the same thing, though. <laughs> but, but hey, but Dre, but I do understand. So, right. and, and, I want you, and I want you to talk about it too, man, because you guys, you know, when you're dealing with this first year of marriage, everything is just you know, you're on a high, but mm -hmm. then reality sets in. Reality. That you're going to have to put some work in. And everything mm -hmm. that you might have liked at the mm -hmm. first, you realize that you discover some other things. But talk right. about the connection that you guys have to be able to not only die to yourself and growing together, right. but some things that you would share with people who in this first season of marriage need to know. I would definitely, definitely say if you're not willing to die daily to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Marriage relationship is not the thing for you because there's no way it's gonna work. And I've always prayed and I say, God, let me, let me, let me find a woman uh, uh, that basically has a desire for you just as well as I do. Uh, mm -hmm. First of all, because if she desires your heart, 
then she's going to know how to treat mine. And if yeah. I desire God's heart, he, I'm going to know how to treat her. So that was basically where we started from, babe. If you, all I need is you to give me what you want. Mm -hmm. If you want to receive it, then be willing to give it. And we just started at those basic things. Now we all, we both have our different wants and desires and needs, but the love that we have for God first and the love that we have for each other causes us to have a contest on who can love each other better. If you feel what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 I love that. And of course, you know she gotta be an awesome woman. You wrote a song about her. I wrote a and song, the, the first woman I've ever. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, no, no, not not even a breakup song, Jay. Not a breakup you... song. Look at here. When I was breaking up a song, I would bring that guy. Uh, I'm saying bye bye out on you. Yeah, I would yeah, play it. Goodbye, love. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I love, I love the new single, My Angel. You released Thank a video you. on it as well. But take us into this song because it's got to be a special kind of woman when you put pen to paper. Yeah, she is, man. Uh, she basically inspired me uh, to, to just give love a try again, you know. Yeah. Um, I love God with all my heart, but I'm sorry, everybody don't have the heart of God. <laughs> and yeah. uh, when you got, when you can find somebody that, that, you, that you can feel the heart of God in, or uh, that, that light shines, that it draws you to say, man, let me let me try this again. Let me do this yeah. again. And no matter what I've dealt with or what I've been through, she she pulled me into a place to where I can it's just as much as I trust God, I can trust her also. So yeah, uh it inspired me to love her, you know, yeah. and I just started putting the pen to the paper and this is what I came out with. I don't call her, she's more than a woman to me. She's yeah. an angel. My angel. I right. love that. I want everybody to, man, get the single. Get the single, check out the video, but most of all, get the single. Support, support my yes, brother. Sir. You know, this is definitely written from a genuine heart of truth. Anytime you put pen to paper, man, I know it's always it's it's the reality of what's real, not only for you, but it blesses so many people because when we can celebrate the person that God brings into our life, and we don't we, we talk all the time and we we realize we don't live in a fantasy when it comes to relationships. Mm -hmm. You know, we may not agree on everything, we may not in relationship, we may have our differences, but but you still gotta remember the prize that God has given you. Oh yeah, yeah. And her at the same time. Right. You know, because sometimes when we get into those di difficult moments, man, if we forget that, hey, this is your angel, and mm -hmm. you gonna try to, you start treating them like they're a demon. Is that, <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, it's right. my, it's my <laughs> demon now. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. You, never, you never, I never wanted to, uh, dishonor uh, a woman that God says that's my favor. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Look, if she's my favor, I'm not trying to do nothing bad to you. You know right. what I'm saying? I, I want to cherish that. I want to nurture that because I wanted to continue to grow and I want to continue to bless me because I had to find out the hard way, A.V., that I'm I'm not blessed as I can be yeah. until I find a wife, <laughs> Woo. you know, yeah, and, so, and know how to treat her, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, that when they, when they say a help me, God really That's mean it. that, you know. He helping me too, man. <laughs> and I, you know, I already knew her work ethic. I tell anybody, I say, listen, right. you looking for somebody that work hard, Bishop Becker right. is the one. She oh, works, she goes in. Oh, she yeah. goes in. She got a drive like <laughs> another. So, listen, you've been right. blessed. God has definitely given you somebody that only you, not only you sharpen, but they sharpen you in the same thing, man. Right. I'm excited for you. Uh, I know you're going to be a part of. Uh, Tom Joyner's Fantastic Voyage uh, cruise yeah. in early yeah. 2022. And uh, how many times have you been on this cruise? This this will actually be my second time going. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, be my second time. And actually, that's this year. Actually, November of this year. Okay, so you already yeah. know. You already know how that cruise is. That's going to be a lot of oh, fun. Oh my god! <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna work. We're gonna work the first night. Yeah. And for gospel night and in the next six days it's vacation because <laughs> listen that's i tell people i said that's the cruise where you never sleep man you don't you, don't. you do not sleep is is party 24 7 i'm talking yeah. about you wake up in the morning it's bumping you that's all you hear <laughs> It's a fantastic voice for real. Yes, it yeah. is. But it's yeah. it's something that I would I, I I would encourage everybody to just experience it once, man. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah, man. Yeah. 
Well, bro, I'm excited for you. Listen, this has been an awesome time. And of course, you know, we'll definitely gather again to, to do more uh, conversations behind the blessing here on Praise uh, 92.1. Right. We thank you, man. And let everybody know, Dre, how they can keep up with you. And of course, how they can uh, get the single My Angel. Uh, uh, the single My Angels on every all, all the digital down, downloading places that you can get your music from nowadays. And uh, uh, you can reach out to me at Dre Tate Music. Uh, at gmail.com for all the kinds of information. I'm on all the social media uh, links. Uh, Facebook, I'm on there as Dre Tate or Dre Tate Music. And Instagram, I'm at Dre.Tate, D-R-A-Y dot T-A-T-E. The one and only Dre Tate of the Williams Brothers now, of course, uh, doing this thing, my angel, the single. Make sure you go out and get it. Appreciate you guys being with us on Behind the Blessing. As I said, make sure you have the Praise 92 one praise houston uh instagram make sure you follow us on facebook make sure you're following us on youtube as well keep up with us we're doing great things in the city definitely want to be a blessing for you and follow me at faith and fame with av behind the blessing praise 92.1 you guys be blessed